Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And in our previous class, we have discussed about the classification and structure of the diencephalon parts. And in detail, we have discussed about the anatomical structure of the thalamus. And today, we will be discussing about the remaining parts of the pars dorsalis that includes the metathalamus and the epithalamus. The metathalamus are small rounded elevations on the inferior aspect of pulvinar. The term pulvinar is very familiar for you. In the previous class we have discussed about the anatomy of thalamus and we have seen what pulvinar is. And the metathalamus consists of a medial geniculate body and a lateral geniculate body. Here we have a diagrammatic representation and you can see the thalamus here and the pulvinar part of thalamus and on the inferior aspect of the pulvinar part of thalamus you can see two rounded elevations they are nothing but the lateral geniculate body and the medial geniculate body the medial geniculate body is oval shaped collection of gray matter on the inferior aspect of the pulvinar and if a lesion happens to one of the medial geniculate body on either sides then it won't be having any effects on the hearing but if both are involved, then there will be obviously an effect on the hearing. While the functions include, it is the last relay station on the auditory pathway, which sends the auditory impulses through auditory radiation to the auditory area of the temporal lobe. While the lateral geniculate body is bean shaped and it is consisting of six laminae. Six laminae means six layers. And if a lesion happens to one side of the, one side, then it causes the blindness on the opposite half of the field of vision. That is a peculiarity of the lateral geniculate body. And the last release station on the optic pathway and it sends impulses through the optic radiation to the visual cortex of occipital lobe. This concludes the metathalamus and the epithalamus lies in relation to the posterior part of the roof of the third ventricle. So the term third ventricle is new for you that we will be shortly taking and I will be explaining on the ventricular system of the brain which includes a few spaces which stores the CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid and circulates it around the brain. So that will be dealt in the following classes. So just imagine that the epithalamus is in relation to the posterior part of the roof of the third ventricle and in the adjoining part of its lateral wall. That will be discussed in detail when we are really considering the ventricular system. And the structures included in the epithalamus are the pineal gland or the epiphysis cerebri, the habenular, habenular nuclei and the habenular commissure along with the posterior commissure. So the epithalamus, you can see the diagrammatic representation where this yellow colored part represents the corpus callosum which is formed by the commissural fibers between the two cerebral hemispheres. So this tail part is of the corpus callosum is termed as the splenium of the corpus callosum and below that you can see the pineal gland, the habenular commissure, the posterior commissure and you can see a small recess which is extending into the two lamina of the stalk that is the pineal recess. So these are the parts of the epithalamus. So let's discuss each one in detail. So the first one is the pineal gland. It is a small piriform or cone shaped reddish gray structure which is having the dimensions 3 mm to 5 mm. And the location is it occupying the vertical groove between the two superior colliculi below the splenium of corpus callosum. So that you have seen in the previous diagram and it has a stalk which divides into two lamina and they are the ventral lamina and the dorsal lamina while there is extension of the cavity of the third ventricle between these lamina and it is termed as the pineal recess. So here in the previous diagram you can see here will be the third ventricle. So there is a projection of the third ventricular cavity between the two laminas and that is termed as the pineal recess. So the same picture in a magnified version you can see here. You can see the habenular commissure, then the dorsal lamina, 
of the stalk of pineal gland then you can see the pineal gland then the ventral lamina and you can see the posterior commissure as well while the structure of pineal gland it is a neuroendocrine gland which is histologically consisting of pinealocytes which secretes the melatonin and the neuroglial cells which supports it and a peculiar feature of the pineal gland is that the calcium phosphate and the carbonates are deposited in the gland as the age progresses and that will cause a particular phenomenon called as a brain sand that can be traced in the mri scans and all as a deposition as a hard material which is placed within the brain that is nothing but the calcium phosphate and the carbonates getting deposited as the age progresses then the functions of pineal gland includes the neuroendocrine activity regulation and more particularly it it is having an inhibitory action over most of the neuroendocrine functions while it is having another function called as the biological clock for physiological and behavioral control and it secretes melatonin and that is produced more at night which inhibits all the hormonal changes in the body and its production falls during the daytime so that's why we are active in the daytime and we will feel like to sleep at the night time so that is the function of the pineal gland and it is having some unique features it is the only part of brain which has no nerve cells in it that is an interesting fact and along with that it is only part of the brain which is supplied by a nerve that is nervus coronary which arises from outside the brain and that is it arises from the cervical sympathetic ganglion the habenular nucleus its location it lies beneath the habenular triangle which is a small imaginary triangular area above the superior colliculus and the medial to the pulvinar so that is the location of the habenular nucleus you have to know very little things about the habenular nucleus so these are the things that you should remember the location it lies beneath the habenular triangle then the habenular nucleus together with its connections forms a part of the limbic system so we have already covered the limbic system i hope you remember that and the habenular commissure which connects the habenular nuclei on either sides and it crosses the midline by passing through the superior lamina of the stalk of pineal gland we have learn just before about the stalk of the pineal gland which is having two lamina the ossa ventral lamina and the dorsal lamina so it passes through the superior lamina of the stalk of pineal gland and the last part that is the posterior commissure it is also known as the epithalamic commissure and the location it lies in the inferior lamina of the stalk of pineal gland or the pineal body we have seen in the previous diagram about the location of posterior commissure i have shown you roughly we will see it once again and it is thought to have a major role in the visual system so here we have a magnified image this is the smaller image where you have a magnified version here where you can see the pineal gland then the dorsal lamina which is continuous with the habenular commissure here then you have a ventral lamina which is continuous with the posterior commissure here so this concludes the metathalamus and the epithalamus thank you